Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Crusader Kings 2! The Old Gods, it's actually going really well. The Old Gods are spreading their faith uh, down through Ireland as the Kingdom of Scotland now, the pagan slash Norse Kingdom of Scotland. Admittedly, I don't 100% know what pagan means. Uh, my unmarried King Northern Lion, the pious Northern Lion Banana Dong, of course, uh, from the house Banana Dong. Uh, it has an heir, thankfully, who is the mayor of, like, everything, but still no wife. Um, we have some council positions that are open, which we should definitely fill. Who is this? Marshall. So, we can find someone with high martial skill. Our people kind of suck, by and large, but that's okay. They're, they're, they're trying. Let's try to convert some people around. Uh, and what I'm thinking right now is I, I've hemorrhaged prestige. We used to have, like, 2,500, but I've used so much prestige, uh, like, breaking truces and stuff. Like, my dude, people are pretty pissed off at him. He's got, like, super low diplomacy because I keep uh, hemorrhaging uh, or keep breaking truces. So what we are actually going to do is see if we can do another blot. I'm not, I guess you can only... Oh, you can do more than one of those in a lifetime. Uh, and we'll also show off one second. It's not Crusader Kitties 2. It's Crusader Kings 2. Get off of my lap. Um, we'll also do some more, um, when can we start this? We can start the Great Blot in November. Okay, so first things first, let's go on a grand hunt. I'm basically thinking, uh, why don't we show off some of the, the uh, kind of intrigue stuff that you can do, uh, when you're not actively at war, which we are right now. So, right now, we're basically just trying to improve our martial ability with a grand hunt. Maybe we can improve our prestige as well. It's always nice to do these if you're at peacetime, because it basically, uh, just gives you something to do, and having something to do is pretty important, so... Uh, we're gonna try to find the white stag, get some prestige, etc, etc. It's not all that important. Refer of Tiviadale has usurped the title of the Temple of Rosemarkey from Henry. Is Henry our vassal? No. Is this guy our vassal? Sure, by all means. Go crazy. Uh, he has, uh, consolidated some stuff that's going on there. I don't really care, though. I swear to God, Cat, if you don't get off of this, I'm gonna conquer you next. You get out of there. Alright, uh, so we're just gonna let this grand hunt continue. I, it's over for now, but we did gain some prestige, which is good. I'm not sure if I can actually, uh, do a blot now. Oh, I can! Good! So we can actually get a lot of prestige just by sacrificing our, um, our prisoners. And in the meantime, this is also gonna improve our vassals' opinions of us, which might be awesome. I mean, by and large, I've been very good about vassal management. Lots of people at 100. Everybody's happy with me. Uh, but this could change, so it's always nice to, you know, not take it for granted. Let's lower our military levies, uh, because we are going to want to declare war probably on Tyrone next, because these guys have a, a substantial, um, army contingent, and if I can wipe them out, that's beautiful, so we're just going to gain a ton of prestige and piety, uh, from sacrificing all of our prisoners, basically, and this will allow us to, uh, possibly, uh, ruin a, a bunch of people's shit, basically, as we, uh, prepare to do some more invasions. Well, it's not Dark Souls invasions, but we are doing invasions uh, to a certain context. What is this? Morsels of food and clean pig bones fly everywhere from the direction of Bjorn as he greedily stuffs himself with the delicacies served at the table. Ron Swanson? What happened? He still loves us, though. Suddenly, his face turns a strange shade of green and he rushes towards the exit, but only makes it as far as Mayor Helgi before he starts retching his stomach contents into poor Helgi's lap. Oh, come on, man. It's just food poisoning. I wasn't trying to poison you or anything. You're like my favorite vassal. Oh, the second favorite vassal. All right, good. The feast is over. Time to feed! So we are going to try to take over Tyrone here, because we still have truces with these ding-nongs. Um, so, Tyrone. We'll just start offering vassalization. I think most of them are going to say no. Is this the dude from, like, the Big Bang Theory, but only with his head shaved? Um, I'm just uh, checking to see if any of these guys uh, want to be vassalized, because if I don't have to invade them, it saves me some time. Uh, although, sometimes it's easier to just take them over. We might have to create the Kingdom of Ireland before they would even consider letting us vassalize them. But anyway, Tyrone is the big fish here. Uh, let's declare war. Conquest of Tyrone. Not going to cost us any prestige. Remember, we have automatic Casus Belli uh, as a result of our uh, paganists and the fact that they are a coastal province. We have a lot of troops uh, at our disposal here. Uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 3,000, uh, if not more. So we're going to try to consolidate them all right here. Uh, the problem is, oh, Tyrone only has like a thousand troops left because we decimated them last time. Okay, we are going to steamroll uh, over the rest of Ireland here, if I had to guess. So, we'll, I'll broadcast the war with Tyrone. After that, I'll probably, because um, all these counties are independent, I can declare war on them uh, independently. Um, what I, let's send these 270 dudes over here. Oh my god, this cat, I swear to god. Get out of here! Get out of here! You, go, go, go. All right, sorry about that. Um, we're going to use this as like a hunting force to strike uh, down those dudes. And then we're going to send the rest of our dudes into a merged army, which will then go into Tyrone, and we will use them to siege. And I really don't anticipate uh, anything going wrong here. But yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll show the siege of Tyrone, because this is um, 
you know, the first thing that we're going to do here to kind of get a foothold. And then I'll show when I unify Ireland. But for the main uh, purposes of this video, uh, unifying Ireland is going to be... Uh, we should actually create a new unit here. Um, for the purposes of this video, I should say the, the, the uh, main goal that we have is going to be unifying Ireland. So actually, they might uh, win a battle here, which is just me... Uh, planning pretty poorly, but if my force manages, ah, they, they lost the battle, but um, you know, my remaining troops came in, pretty much decimated them, and we captured a bishop. He will look nice in a human sacrifice a little bit later for us, whenever we need to gain some prestige and piety again. Uh, and I really should have chosen uh, become a paragon of virtue as my ambition for this guy. By the way, keep in mind, you know, our king's getting uh, a little up there. Oh, I was wounded. That is the perfect time to bring it up. So now this wounded trait carries some negative stuff for us. Um, but it, it will probably contribute to a lower lifespan as well. Uh, but for now, he's still alive. But he's getting up there in age, at least for 867. It's the year um, where he's age 42. And people don't live all that long back then, as you might expect. You know, he's a king, so he lives a little bit better. But he also, now he has a wound, which might make him ill or might scar. Uh, so he might not live past 45 or 50. So we got to start thinking about our succession. How old's our son? He's 14, and he loves us because we've given him, like, basically every uh, piece of territory in the world, um, which is great. Who, do we have another? Yeah, we have a daughter who's 14 as well, and we'll try to marry her off uh, to someone who would be a powerful ally for us. But anyway, we're going to keep going onwards here. What I'm trying to, think, what I'm trying to say is um, that we have uh, a succession crisis possibly brewing, but with only one son, that's really good, unless he dies, in which case we are fucked. All right, so what do we want here? If there's a god, why is the world filled with hardships, grief, and heretics? God has a plan for everything and everyone. We could become uh, zealous, or God is as clueless as I am. We could become cynical. Let's become uh, zealous, if possible. Beautiful. Following Thor's will is more important than anything else. I have gained the zealous trait. I'm happy with that. Uh, our dude is obviously very much uh, in tune with religion. You know, although my uh, personal... Oh, I don't really care about what's going on here. Although my personal beliefs might not align with that, I'm, uh, you know, role-playing this character here. And that's what matters. So I was also, you know, looking at the map, and I was like, you know, the what eventually will become England looks totally right for the taking. Like, as opposed to Scotland and Ireland, which are essentially, at least from my perspective, uh, one fairly unified area, with the exception of these Irish provinces, obviously. England is subdivided amongst a number of smaller powers, which seems like it could be right for the taking. I'm thinking maybe we take Ireland, and then we try to, like, use a... Uh, our navy to, to start taking the southern provinces. We don't even need to use our navy. Uh, but we start taking over these southern provinces and then kind of pincer attack Jorvik at the end to see if we can make this work. Uh, is Jorvik still being led by King Halfdan Whiteshirt? No. King Ragnar the Onready. Not the best uh, superlative that he could be given. Anyway, what I like about Ireland here is that as opposed to, you know, Albany and Moray up here, uh, all of these areas are... Um, uh, independently ruled, so we can just declare war on them whenever we see fit, basically. Uh, we have dragged out another lady there, who we will eventually sacrifice at 67%. Are you willing to accept demands? Almost certainly not. Okay, that's fine. We'll continue onwards. Here's this. Do I own this land? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so it's only this, this, and this that I need. I really wish Prince Constantine would just, like, accept vassalization. Like, come on, dude. Why does he hate me so much? Oh, right, because I usurped his title, broke his truce, declared war on him many times. I'm an infidel. Uh, he wants a lot of my territory. How about this queen? Maybe I could just marry her. How old is she? She's 14. I could marry my son to her and then probably not have to fight them. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not sure that if that's the best option, but I could just take it by force as well. Uh, I don't necessarily want her kids to have claim or her like her grandchildren to have claims on land that maybe the more pure bloodline might have. I don't know, man. I'm just doing my best here. Oh, good. The wound is healed, so we are no longer wounded. We are scarred, but that gives us a little extra prestige. Plus, chicks dig scars. I wouldn't know because my dude is still unmarried. But anyway, uh, we have another 4% to go until they will likely accept demands. I mean, I can understand why they have to get to 100% because basically we're like, hey, we're going to take over like everything that you've ever loved, possibly throw you in jail, etc., etc. Uh, but yeah, I'm imagining that most of the rest of this video is just going to be me, be me uh, slowly conquering... What is this? You were drawn to a large, cheerful, cheerful crowd standing in front of a tall building in Tyrone. It seems they've gathered to watch the antics of a man who has climbed onto the building's roof. The de despairing man, tired of the hardships of life, is threatening to jump, and several of the onlookers are goading him on. You dicks! Uh, don't do it. You hurry inside the building and join the desperate man on the roof. No, stay away, he cries when you see him. You slowly climb out into the ledge next to him. I just want to talk. And then you take out a guitar and start singing Third Eye Blind. I've seen Yes Man. And do we want to grab him or talk to him? I want to talk to him because if I grab him, I might accidentally kill myself. Let's talk to him. 
You speak gently with the distressed man as if addressing a child while keeping a safe distance not to alarm him. You lecture him. You follow with several long-winded anecdotes, including several important moral lessons in the end. The man jumps. A har, har, har. Well, at the very least, we gained uh, some diplomacy. And uh, that will mark the end of our conquest of Tyrone as well. So let's uh, offer some peace. And there we go. We've gotten a little bit more. And as usual, I will be giving away... Uh, all of this territory that I get because we can't really do anything with it yet. And we can't create the Kingdom of Ireland yet. So I am going to, uh, again, use the power of editing. And in doing so, uh, you will hopefully come back to a unified kind of Scotland and Ireland. At least more or less. I'll at least have the uh, the title, hopefully. Let me just quickly check and see if these guys have uh, revised them. Nope, they still do not want vassalization. So yes, I'm going to give away this county. I'll see you guys in a little while. Alright, so welcome back after a fairly eventful uh, off-camera six minutes, aka probably like five or six years. How old's my dude? He's gotta be, eh, 45. So yeah, five or six years um, of Crusader Kings 2 action. So I did not take over Ireland yet. I took over a couple of provinces, at least one. Uh, but then I noticed that my truce has expired up here in the north of what is now Scotland. So I decided, you know what, we'll wipe out Albany, we'll wipe out Moray, uh, and I wiped out uh, Buchan as well. And now we have control of uh, all of essentially modern-day Scotland, unless, you know, Cumberland or Northumberland. Uh, are part of Scotland. Ad admittedly, I'm not a little bit fuzzy on where the uh, Scottish-English border is, uh, which I'm sure is going to annoy a lot of Scots and Englishmen, but in any case, uh, let's move onwards here, and we should be able to mostly kind of conquer the rest of uh, Ireland over the course of this video. What I, what's weirding me out is that we actually have some uh, soldiers from Brittany here. Uh, Brittany, of course, located on the uh, northwestern part of France here. Or West Francia, I guess. So they, I guess maybe they are trying to conquer a little bit of Ireland for themselves. Which scares the shit out of me because I really don't want to get in a fight with Western Europe. I just want to kind of hang out in my own area. And also, what the fuck is going on here? It looks like Sweden has been formed. A messy, pox-ridden version of Sweden. But Sweden has been formed as well. And they are taking some territory in England. So... You know, my territorial wars with minor powers are kind of like the, the time is running out on those. Um... I'm either going to have to get into it with Brittany probably soon, uh, or I'm going to have to get into it with Sweden, which obviously I don't really want to do right now. But first things first, uh, in this episode, we're mostly just concerned about getting Ireland. So we're going to start, again, conquering some uh, fairly probably easy uh, Irish, well, what are now Irish, I guess, territories, and uh, in, in the present day, of course, I mean. And uh, then we're going to take over them as soon as possible, and in all likelihood, we shouldn't have too much trouble. They've got 518 men. Uh, plus another 400 from Ossery here. We might lose an initial battle, but I, I would be very, very surprised if we ended up even having the slightest struggle when it comes to war here. Um, you know, they have something like 918 men combined. I should have around uh, three or 4,000 uh, once these men actually finally uh, finish up. So we're going to send these 1,800 men down here to fight. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily the brightest idea to siege my territory, but we'll reroute this other uh, hundred and so men. And hopefully my men will be able to take this battle. It looks like it's going pretty well so far. Uh, beautiful. So we've already got plus 24% war score. They're going to have to fall back into some um, enemy territory. Fine by me. Um, the reason, by the way, a lot of people are asking, like, why don't you just continually, like, blob, like, fight, 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 instead of, like, declare war, end war, declare war, end war. You have to go through that cycle, because you can't declare war on an enemy if you already have, uh, army levies raised. So this is the, the way that it has to be done, as far as I know, at least, uh, in order to, to keep things moving. Otherwise, you know, you, you just can't do what you're telling me to do. So after I, uh, get a few more territories... Good, we don't have any other enemies up here. Uh, after I uh, take a few more territories in Ireland, I should be able to create the Kingdom of Ireland, which is kind of, as I mentioned, my overall goal. Yeah, we, we can create a lot of duchies, but I don't normally do that. I create kingdoms because I like the way that we can, you know, completely rename our uh, title. Okay, so we have the Countess of Connacht. Uh, obviously, we're going to take her and try to keep those red-headed genes coming, coming through the... Uh, Gene pool here. Uh, her husband is the Earl of Connacht, who is kind of a dick to us, so I hate to do this, but we're gonna definitely take her as a concubine. Now, my king's been pretty shitty about, um, you know, actually impregnating these concubines. That is a sentence I did not expect to be saying. Um, how old is this lady? She's 16? That's very surprising to me, but we'll take her as a concubine as well, because I want more children, basically. Um, sure, so now we have three concubines, which I believe is the, the maximum. Wow, we conqu we got so many kids during that siege. Um, but yes, in any case, 
Uh, we basically, I want to have my king be a little bit more, you know, proactive on the, the child rearing front, or child having front at least, so the rearing doesn't bother me so much, I guess. Because uh, I want my gene pool to survive. The problem is, if I only have one son, it's a good thing for succession. Unfortunately, uh, it also carries certain negatives along with it because, um, you know, if, if he dies, then our game might actually just end if we have no uh, heir. Anyway, so we, we've taken his territory from him. Uh, we got to 100 war score there, as you might have noticed. Uh, and we uh, should, let me think, I've got to give away a, a little bit more uh, territory here. I'm going to give that to Ron Swanson, who has been just eating up this territory, nom nom nom, like a plate of all the bacon and eggs. Uh, there we go. So we have good domain size again. Hopefully my next dude has good stewardship. Now we can create the Kingdom of Ireland. Yeah, I just saw it in there. So we're going to cycle through these. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot of money, maybe 500. Uh, it'll cost 200 gold, 200 piety, and will give us 400 prestige. Cool by me. Yes, I will do this. So now we've created the Kingdom of Ireland. So if we wanted to, uh, we could change our name here uh, from, from Scotland to Ireland. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not that important, basically, is my perspective on matters. So I'm, instead, I'm just going to try to blob out Scotland here uh, and take over the rest of these Irish territories. And basically, as long as my king survives long enough for this to happen, I'm going to be very content uh, in that. So what I might actually do, okay, so let's, first things first, uh, we're going to lower all military levies. I'm going to try something I, I've never done before, actually. Uh, I'm going to try to declare war on Ossery, because this is probably a faster way to do things. Uh, and um, Thormund, unless they want vassalization, they don't, okay. I'm going to declare war on Ossery and Thormund at the same time, so we can hopefully uh, conquer them twice as fast, because the real pain in the ass now is actually just getting my troops down there. Like, that's what's taking forever. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the actual fighting happens fairly quickly, but uh, it's the the walking that takes forever. I don't want to take on the whole country all at once, although I probably could at this point. Uh, maybe I'll do that with some mercenaries later, but uh, for now, let's just do things this way. This guy's just fighting like a peasant revolt or something there, so, you know, cool by me. Um, first things first, let's go, uh, we'll start sieging Ossery. Doesn't really worry me. Who wants to be my seer? This guy's my vassal. Sure, you know what? You can be my new seer. You're a, a nice dude, uh, and I want to keep you happy. Seer is basically like court chaplain, uh, only uh, with the uh, old gods kind of Viking, the pagan version, I should say. All right, so we're going to start sending some dudes over here so we can siege both of these at the same time. This might be a little boring, but I don't think I'm going to use the power of editing just because we are so close to actually conquering the entire continent here. And again, this is, in some ways, even though I'm not very good at the game, it is kind of a tutorial uh, series. Let me just merge these armies together. Um, in some ways, it is kind of a tutorial series, so I don't want to skip over stuff that might actually be important to people. Who knows, man? Uh, and like I said, with 500... Oh, shit, we are ill. This could mean we die soon. I really don't want that to happen, because uh, our king has been so good so far. If he dies, we're going to become our son. Our son is maybe 16 now. Oh, no, he's, he's 18. Uh, what is he? What's his, like, special ability? He's a detached priest. Oh, my God. He has so many uh, traits associated with him. What's he good at? Almost nothing. He's not a great heir, but he is my heir, Prince Northern Lion II. Looks just like his father. Uh, it's it's very strange to me that his liege is Odor of Suffolk. I don't recall making that happen, but okay. That's a little frightening to me, but maybe this will all become uh, Suffolk one day, or maybe this little area will become uh, Scotland. Anyway, for now, this is fine. Uh, our daughter actually reached legal age as well, if I go to my family. So she is um, Prince Northern Lioness, uh, Northern Lion's daughter. Uh, and she is a also a detached priest, I think. Yeah, but um, you know she's got a lot of things associated with her as well. I should probably marry her off, uh, but I want to marry her off to uh, someone that would be good for us. So we'll, we'll wait on that. Maybe we'll talk about marriage in the next episode. Because, you know, the first few episodes... Good, we're not ill anymore. First few episodes here have definitely been focused around war and conquest and uh, kind of the basics. But we'll move into the more court-style st stuff, you know, like uh, intrigue and plots and, uh, you know, marriages and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I can strive to become better or I can be satisfied with who I am and what I have. I will never be satisfied. I want to be ambitious. My unwed daughter has been indiscreet. She's been hiding her pregnancy from me and now presents me with her child. Pay heavily to deal with it quietly. The child is of my blood and I will take care of both of them. What happens here? Uh, okay, we get an infant. She becomes more pleased with us. We lose five prestige and gain kind. Punish her harshly and give away the child. Let's punish her harshly and give away the child. The reason being uh, that I want her to become chaste because then she's not going to have as many kids and that means less claims on my land, probably. Hopefully. 
So maybe that was a mean way to deal with things, but I think it's also a logical way to deal with things, given the realities of the year 890. Uh, so we're just, again, continuing our sieges here. And hopefully, I just want these guys to accept vassalization. I don't want to have to fight them all, uh, but I probably will have to fight them all, which is where our mercenaries will come in. And I have the, definitely have the money to uh, support uh, funding an entire army of mercenaries because I own uh, an F-ton of property right now, basically. I'm probably one of the largest countries in Europe. Uh, well, you know, there's some that are a little bit bigger, but uh, I, I'm definitely I'm pleased with the way things have gone so far. This is what's nice about starting with a... Um, a young-ish king, because he's gonna live long enough to uh, really accomplish some good stuff. I mean, remember, he started as a petty king of some very small lands, uh, and now he is the ruler of both uh, Scotland and Ireland, which are kingdoms that he has created with his own hands. Plus, he's pious as hell, man. All right, so we've definitely um, managed to take Ossery, uh, and we'll give um, some more, t can I give these titles to my son yet? No, I cannot. Because he is not independent. I could give them to his liege, but I don't know. I've created a weird situation here. Like, if I die and I start playing as this guy, he's no longer... Well, he's the Prince of Scotland, so he'll get all my land. But he would also still answer to this guy? Who's got this tiny little land down here? That seems crazy to me. I don't know, but that's part of the fun of Crusader Kings, seeing what happens there. Um, so I definitely do have to give away some more, uh, land. Again, I'm probably making Ron Swanson, like, the most powerful man in the world here. But he's, he's been so nice about it that I can't help but, you know, just, he's got, like, a nice face around him, doesn't he? Uh, we're gonna see, again, if, if any of these dudes want vassalization. The fact that they don't kind of, it, it makes me feel pretty bad about things. Because I'm like, come on, man, you could be my vassal. I'm a nice king. You can see, do you see how much, uh, land I gave that one dude? Uh, again, I, I I know his name, but I, I think it's Bjorn, but I keep calling him Ron Swanson just because his mustache tickles my fancy and probably other parts of my body if I played my cards right. Well, it'd be better considering how much land I've given him, but anyway. Um, we're, let's Before the episode ends, let's try to blob out Scotland until it uh, encompasses the entirety of uh, the Irish island here. So we have three more territories to go through. Go to diplomacy, offer peace, enforce demands. Beautiful. So again, we'll, we'll give that land to Ron Swanson, but uh, I'm going to... Use the power of editing again, and you guys will be uh, hopefully coming back to an entirely united under the Scottish flag uh, version of Ireland here. All right, so I'm bringing you guys back up to speed now. You might have noticed that uh, what was formerly Ireland is now looking a particularly Scottish shade of blue. As mentioned, it was pretty uh, uneventful, or as hypothesized, it was a pretty uneventful conquest. I hired some mercenaries just to speed it up, but our, our economy is booming pretty nicely right now. We'll talk a little bit more about that in future episodes, but... Um uh, I'm basically making more gold than I'm spending on these mercenaries, which is awesome. Uh, once we reach 100 war score, we're at 88 right now, which means after this siege, uh, we should be at 100. Uh, that will be the end of essentially Ireland. It will now... Wait, what the heck has happened? Okay, we, we've, we've had a, a peasant revolt. We can deal with that. That's fine. The peasants have risen up in Dunbar, led by a disgruntled former soldier. The rebels have the nerve to demand independence. Well, I, you know, I could just grant them independence and then take over their country if I wanted to. Uh, but let's do things the old-fashioned way here. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of other things that I have to mention, as you probably just imagined by that baby crying. Uh, we'll offer you peace, enforce demands. Uh, I've been giving uh, some territory to people who are not Ron Swanson. But the other, th the most important thing, uh, as my king looks kind of old now, looks kind of like... Um, Jeff Bridges in the first Iron Man, only with a sweet mullet on the sides, a skullet, if you will. Um, yeah, the other thing is that we've had two more children with our concubines, which is good. Uh, why this guy is the heir of our area is kind of unknown to me. Why can I not... Oh, we have to be at peace. Okay, this is fine. Uh, we could make our gender laws agnatic, which means that... Um, I don't actually know what that means, which is interesting. But I can, you know, change different laws in here as well. I usually don't mess around with this too much. Uh, what was I going to say? Yes, we've had sons. Uh, so th those sons could be uh, important, or they could be uh, not that important. I, it all depends on how succession goes. I don't know why this son is the heir to the Kingdom of Ireland. Can I revoke a title from him? I think that's how to do with... Uh, that's how to, how it, um, Norse succession works. I apologize if this sounds a little strange so far, but this is the first time I've ever really gotten this far as the Norse. What is Fife doing here? Am I fighting Fife? How did you become independent? I certainly did not grant that to you. Um, but yeah, maybe Norse independence works, um, simply by virtue of, uh, you know, every son gets their own kingdom, which is a little strange. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna give, uh, is it Odor that I wanted to give some more territory? We'll grant him, uh, the county that we just took over, which is, uh, now 
something unpronounceable to me. Good. Uh, and then we'll send our dudes up here to uh, conquer this area. This dude's going to accept our offer for vassalization, so that nasty little teal location should now become dark blue, as it did. And the last thing we'll do is kind of get our kingdom back to uh, a period of civil... Uh, equilibrium, which is great. Uh, we're gonna be able to wipe these uh, peasants off the face of the planet, which I'm pretty excited about personally. Uh, we are winning the war already, uh, but I really need to kind of get in a battle with them and destroy them to end it. We're already at 50%. Uh, he's gonna come back into here, and then we'll just beat his army up one more time. And he might actually accept demands at this level. We'll see though. Nope, all right. Well, we will, uh, you know, feel free to just wipe his people off the face of the planet then. That's basically... Uh, his own faults. Anyway, uh, 85, is that enough? Probably not, actually. All right, fine, we'll, we'll fight again. There we go, 100. Shouldn't even be any need to do this, but we'll enforce demands, which means we probably, yes, can put him in our jail, so we'll execute him at some point. Last thing, this came up unexpectedly, but um, we could imprison our own daughter. What was she trying to do? I forgot her plot. She was trying to kill my son? My son's name starts with, like, an S? Prince, yeah, she was trying to kill this dude, Prince Sigur Ross of uh, Scotland. So you know what, why don't we throw our daughter in jail? I'm pretty pissed off about this, but um, it's not very nice of you, Princess Northern Lioness. Is that because I, what did I do to her? I can't remember, probably something bad, but anyway, it won't be the first time I'm gonna throw a banana dong in jail, if you know what I mean. Uh, we are gonna lower our military here, and this is, a, you know, forgive me if I take a moment to kind of back up and bask in the glow of our glorious Scotland here, but uh, this is awesome. We've created uh, a, an independent Scotland that is incredibly large, encompassing uh, both present-day Scotland and Ireland. Now, we have to figure out what we want to do next. Cornwall looks weak. Um, these, like, Welsh kingdoms here look weak as well. Uh, Sweden scares the shit out of me. Uh, but maybe we'll try to take over, like, the southern part here, but that's gonna probably mean getting involved in Western European politics, which is scary. Uh, what other... We can't really create anything that interests me all that much. We're still unmarried, but our king is doing a real good job here. He's 51? 50? 50 years old, so he's probably got a good 10 years left, assuming good health. Uh, and look at that fat prestige, man. I just want to see if there's any kind of uh, special events we can do here. It doesn't appear so. What about... We can revoke theocracies. Kill Bjorn? I don't want to kill Bjorn. Bjorn's my favorite uh, vassal ever. But in any case, as always... Uh, thanks for watching so far, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. This represents probably the end of the first era of uh, our Crusader Kings 2 play, the era where we are just conquering small kingdoms. Uh, now we are likely to go to war with uh, some larger powers over the course of the next few episodes anyway. It might not happen right away. Uh, get involved more in courtly politics uh, and maybe start, you know, he uh, heading in the direction of this total clusterfuck over here in Western Europe, which is still looking... Not that strange. The independent Flanders is kind of interesting. Lotharingia, I don't even know what that is, but it's uh, kind of blobbing out a little bit. Uh, Flanders is independent. Independent Saxony. Italy is going all the way up here in what is now Germany. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you guys will continue to stick around for the series, because now is where things will start to get interesting. Uh, and again, thanks for your support on the series so far, and I will see you next time.